What's going on guys? So yesterday we got the uh, shifter all bolted down in the minivan and we're already running out of daylight But we're gonna try to drive it around some more I think we're gonna head over to PFI and see if the van will make it we did put an alternator on it So we should be good there. There's still no radiator fan, but I can always blast the heater if it starts to get too hot But uh, it is pretty cold out. So I don't think that'll be an issue as long as the van is moving I don't think it's gonna overheat. So uh, yeah, we're gonna take it over there real quick just to kind of cruise it around, start to put some miles on it because now I want to put about, like I said, 50 miles or so, and then we'll be able to put some better oil in it. But uh, yeah, we just got to get her broken in, so no better way to do that than to put some miles on her. So we're going to go head over to PFI right now. Well, the van made it to PFI. And Brent got it strapped down and uh, I didn't plan on putting it on the dyno whatsoever But I guess we're gonna throw it on there. It does have some bugs We're gonna work out. So we got the wideband hooked up to it and uh, One of the main issues we're having with it right now is that it bogs really bad in first gear and sorry It's so dark out, but uh, uh, To keep it running we have to have these two back vacuum nipples uh, Open or else when those are blocked off, it'll just die. So we're gonna try to figure that out and uh, just get it running a little better. And there's also no VTEC either. What? <laughs> what do you mean? All right, so what did you just yeah. find? Shine your light back over here. So I guess we had the yeah. IAC plugged in wrong. Yeah, he had the idle control motor, or the air temperature sensor plugged into the idle control motor, and the idle control motor just chilling over here. That was it's my bad. That's probably, that's probably why I didn't idle very good. But it's very common. I see it every day. So we just have to extend the wires that go to the air intake temperature sensor, and then we'll be good on that. Man, this sucks though. It's so dark. Everyone's gonna be complaining. And this what? is the thing I need to figure out how to bypass. Oh, yeah. I just have that plugged into the harness oh, right I'll here. Do, I'll do that in two seconds. You figure it out? Yes, I did. So we don't need this anymore? No. Because, yeah, you get this and you take it and chuck it in the trash. <laughs> Show everyone how to get rid of it. Alright. So, all Hondas will have this relay. And you can see all the big wires that go into it. Well, it's got this little wire right here. This little one runs all the way out to the park neutral, parker neutral safety deal. So what it does is when it's plugged in, it grounds this wire and makes it to where this relay will kick on once it gets its 12 volt switch. So what we're gonna do is we can cut this wire, take it straight to ground, and then it'll start all the time, or we can cut this wire Take to the clutch switch and it'll work like stock. We'll have one side go to the ground, the side go right to this wire, clutch switch, done. And then so the clutch has to be all the way in for it to crank? Right, just like it would factory. Yeah, I'd rather have that so we don't start it in gear but all by these, accident. You can see these wires, um, everything's there except it just needs this ground trigger which is normally done by that. So we're gonna get rid of that. We're just gonna take this to the switch, out of the switch to ground, done. Easy, easy peasy. Sweet. So Brent just got the VTEC wired in for me. The harness that came with the van didn't have a pin uh, at all for VTEC, so he just threw a pin in there and then ran a wire from A4, which is the pin out on that ECU, just straight to the solenoid right here. Right on that guy, so this uh, orange wire right here goes straight to the ECU. So it should have VTEC now, and right now he's just uh, tuning out the idle. Had her on the dyno for a bit. She did just make 124 wheel horsepower, nothing crazy, but Brent cleaned up the tune quite a bit. But an issue we ran into is that it's not really building uh, very much oil pressure. I kind of noticed that when Brent was doing a pull, it was only staying at like 35 to 40 PSI and it wouldn't climb, which it's supposed to climb much higher than that. So um, not really sure what happened. Uh, there's a chance this oil pump could be going weak and uh, they're telling me that I might have forgot like some pins on the like lobes inside the head for the VTEC. Like that is a possibility when we threw this thing together if one of those pins fell out and it could be losing oil pressure through there. But 
I don't know, it's not safe to rev it out right now, but hopefully it should be safe to drive it home, right? Yeah, it'll be safe. Yeah, because it is making oil pressure. I'm just gonna make sure I have the gauge like where I can see it driving home. But uh, we're probably gonna have to pull the pan off and check some things. I might replace the oil pump on this. The VTEC screen was clean. Yeah, the VTEC screen was clean, yeah. so there's no metal in there. Yeah, we know that. So it's running pretty good, but not sure why it's low on oil pressure, so we're gonna have to figure that out because that always sketches me out when they're low on oil pressure. And that's why I'm that's that's why I'm glad I get that's why I always have a gauge. Like out of all the gauges, I made sure I had this one in here just so I could watch that. Yep. Oil pressure and wide band, you're good. Yeah, those are those are important. But uh did you definitely cleaned it up quite a bit though. Oh, yeah. Like it runs way better now. Yeah. So we, really we fixed a lot of things. Yeah. It did crack VTEC yep. and the wiring's a lot better now. But we just need to figure that out and she should be ready to go but yeah sucks we couldn't turn it up anymore or try to make any more power but we wanted to stop there just in case uh we're gonna hurt anything but yeah we got her unstrapped so we're gonna bring her home for tonight and then we'll look into it well it did cool off a little bit but i don't get it now it's going up to 60 psi when i rev it like it seems way better now i was trying to think because you know he thought maybe you moved the gauge so your oil pressure came back so that shows like you know, VTEC didn't hit till that little spike at the end. But yeah. VTEC was turned, should have been turned on way back here. Look at this out. So you can see where VTEC was turning on then. And these these poles was super fat. So as I cleaned it up, we're coming up, but VTEC just would hit right here way at the end. When it was supposed to hit way sooner. When it was supposed to hit right here. So there's something that's askew. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll figure it out. Oh yeah. But either way, thanks for the tune. It definitely helped a lot. Even just backing it out, now it actually oh, dries. Yeah. I don't know how you. Got <laughs> yeah, it. I was struggling. Was <laughs> it was like yeah. bogging down. <laughs> I was so lean, like over 18. You know. Oh, that's all... not good. <laughs> Whoops. Dang. It's good now though. Yeah. That's why I brought it here. I was actually really glad that we put it on the dyno. I probably would have never seen noticed the gauge because I never watch it when I'm driving. Right. Yeah. Right. So. And then we'd have been square one again. Yep. So it was, pretty, it was good we put it on the dyno, even though I didn't plan on it. The yep. dyno solves all the problems. It's a yes. tool. Unless you're Todd. It's tool. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a tool just like Todd. <laughs> <laughs> I just blow. We, Todd doesn't like the dyno. <laughs> I do, like but that's where his car breaks. <laughs> There's points when I'd have to. Donna doesn't like Todd. Poor CRX. Yeah. Got to get her fixed up, bro. Oh, she'll Got to make the power. Oh, bro, she's coming up. Sorry if this is a little hard to see, but I'm driving back right now. It's just under 50 psi, which is pretty good. And it's kind of weird because it wouldn't come over 40 psi on the dyno. But now it's just under 50, but it won't climb any higher than that if I do bring it up higher in the RPM, which it should be climbing. Uh, Brent told me about 10 PSI for every 1,000 RPM is like the general rule. And it, right when it hits about 50 PSI, it just stops even if the RPM keeps climbing. So either the oil pump is definitely worn out or I might have put something together wrong or you know something came loose. So we'll have to figure it out. But at least there is pressure, so it is safe to cruise around. 50 PSI when you're cruising is still plenty. So as long as there's oil pressure there, we should be all right. So I'm not really worried about it. It's not crazy low or anything. Okay, so it's the following day last night. We had that issue with the oil pressure dropping in the van. And right now we have the gauge taped to the windshield because that's as far as it will reach unless we extend the wires. And we're gonna take it around the block real quick and uh, just kind of double check what the issue is. So it is cold right now and at idle it's just above 70 psi which seems completely normal. To give it a little rev, it comes up to 80. So sorry if that's hard to see. But when it's cold it seems like the oil pressure is fine. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna let it warm up and see what it cruises at and then we'll probably bring it back and we're probably gonna have to rip into the motor a little bit and find out why it's losing oil pressure. to see but like right when VTEC engages it drops from about 60 psi to almost down to 50 when it could be climbing so 
that could tell us they might they might be right about like missing one of the pins in the rocker assembly. So I was looking at some forms online earlier today, and it said a lot of people had the same issue where like they forgot to put the pin in or somehow a pin is missing. And right when VTEC hits, instead of that oil like you know pushing up against the pin and engaging that bigger rocker arm or whatever, uh, there's no pin in there, so the oil just flows, and that's like. Uh, it'll drop oil pressure because there's nothing to hold the oil back. It's just letting it all out. So I'm not sure. We're going to have to take it apart because it should be higher than that. But at least it's not like dangerously low. At least when we're cruising it's about 55 to 60 which is pretty normal. So it's nothing to be worried about. But I don't want to be boosting on it unless it's making a little more than that. So got to get her ripped apart which kind of sucks. Smoke the side a little bit. <laughs> All right, guys. So we just went ahead and got the camshafts out. Uh, we got the timing belt off, and you know all that stuff out of the way, so we could look at if these rocker arms right here had the pins in them, and everything is there. So I don't think anything is wrong with the head. Uh, Todd came by as well. He kind of checked some things out for us, and everything looks good. So. We're still not sure what the issue could be, so what we're gonna try to do in the morning tomorrow is we're gonna jack this thing up, pull the pan off, and uh, you can actually uh, get to the oil pump without taking it off, and we're going to shim the oil pump, which uh, on a factory oil pump, you just pretty much uh, take this bolt off, and there's a spring with a little piston in there, and you put a couple washers on there, and it increases the oil pressure quite a bit on the stock pump. Uh, we'll show how to do that tomorrow. But we're going to try that out and hopefully we will see a difference in the oil pressure. Hopefully it rises. If not, then this thing uh, will probably need a new oil pump. But if it comes down to that, we would definitely put a new oil pump on there. It would just kind of suck because it's pretty tight on space down there. But I'm sure we could get it done. So we'll see what happens tomorrow. Hopefully we'll be able to shim it and that will give us a lot more oil pressure. We're also going to be trying a heavier weight oil after we do this. So right now we're running 10W40 in the van and for instance my hatch has 20W50 and I see much better oil pressures in the hatch and that thicker oil should help bring up the oil pressure a bit. So hopefully shimming it will do the trick. If not, we'll have to rip into it a little more and probably change out that pump as well. If you guys have any ideas of what it could be, uh, please sure to let me know in the comments. You guys did figure out my issue with why it wouldn't crank over and we were able to figure that out right away. This one might be a little more difficult. But uh, yeah, it just cruises a little low on oil pressure, won't come above 60 uh, PSI in any RPM. And when it does cross over into VTEC, uh, it does drop to about almost 50 PSI. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. This video did not go as planned. I was not expecting to have to tear into the motor. Uh, you know, I've put a couple of these together for my hatch. So I have a pretty good idea of how these go together. I'm honestly not sure what's happening. So maybe it is just a weak oil pump and Guess we'll find out tomorrow because if we put these shims in and the oil pressure doesn't change at all then something's definitely up with the pump and I guess there could also be a possibility that the uh, glow shift oil pressure gauge could be messing up but I really don't think it's that because it reads much higher at idle and it will never see those oil pressures again when it's fully warmed up. So I don't, I think the gauge is working properly but uh, yeah we're definitely going to look into it tomorrow but that's going to be it for tonight guys and as always thanks for watching.